Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University, and today we're going to talk about skin. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. Uh, I'm a professor at Texas A&M University, and today we're going to talk about skin. Specifically, we'll talk about the cells of the epidermis, their secretions, uh, and the mucous cutaneous junctions where skin interacts with mucous membranes. So there are uh, different cells. Uh, uh, the main cell that comes through here is a, is the uh, uh, is the keratinocyte uh, that goes in through there. Uh, uh, keratinocyte, the main cell type from the ectoderm. As we see, uh, there's also uh, melanocytes that uh, it's from the neural crest and that's associated with pigmentation. The Lanahan cells we just saw, which is in the spinosum, uh, embryologic role, and then the Merker cell is a cell that interacts with the nerve, uh, nerve endings, and so it helps detect things with the nerve endings. Here we see the melanocyte. It too is a dendritic name. It has branches, uh, as we see here, and it's located in the stratum basal. Uh, and so uh, here we can see one of those cells. There's a cell and these are dendritic processes. This is stained for uh, the enzymes that are in the uh, melanosomes. But if we saw that in a regular piece of tissue, uh, this is the basal, and these clear cells here uh, are the uh, melanocytes because they do not make desmosomal connections, and as a consequence, they shrink uh, as opposed to being attached to the cells, and that makes a clear cell that you see. The Lagerhorn cell is a clear cell that's located uh, in the spinosum. So uh, if you look at the melanocyte, it produces the melanin granules, but it passes on to the keratinocytes, uh, which has has it. So here we see the uh, melanocytes, and this is where the epidermis is been pulled off of the dermis, and we're just looking at these ridges here uh, in the epidermis because the melanocyte is at the very bottom uh, of uh, the uh, epidermis because it actually touches uh, the uh, the dermis as well. So this is epidermis with projections uh, of the melanocytes uh, that we saw a while ago. And so uh, the melanocytes are clear cells that produce the bottle and then it passes on to the keratinocytes and the keratinocytes uh, uh, on the base, the ones on the base here, put those melanin granules, you see there's kind of golden granules, above the nucleus. So when the sun's coming down uh, through the stratum corneum, stratum granulosa spinosum, and stratum basal, uh, the, the DNA inside here is protected uh, by the uh, melanosomes that are there. And here we can see the capping, we call that capping. And here you can see the melanosomes, uh, the capping uh, of, the, of those cells. Now whenever uh, the uh, melanin granules are not evenly distributed, that's whenever you get freckles uh, to occur. If you don't have uh, uh, Melanin, it failed to produce that, that's albinoism. That's the rats that we see is albino. The red that we see there is really blood that we see. Um, malignant, um, uh, so on the cancer, we don't want it. And then Addison disease, also pigment dis distribution. So you have different pigmentation associated with um, um, uh, adrenal cortical uh, insufficiency. So there are some diseases associated with uh, the melanocyte, uh, and this is not uh, malignant melanoma is not a good one to have. Here we see the epidermis and the dermis interaction, uh, and these piles that are produced here are due to the fact that there's more cells around the basal here than there are between there, and so these cells pack up, and that makes a little ridge, and in fact that's what makes your fingerprints. And if you look at this, this ridge is different from that ridge, is different from that ridge. So if these ridges on the same finger are different, of course, a person's uh, fingers would be different from one another and also different uh, from other people. So that's a, the basis of fingerprinting. There's also appendages. You've got the uh, hair follicle. This is a rectal pili muscle that pulls the hair up. If you've ever seen a cat is upset with the hair sticking up, it's the rectal pili muscle that pulls it up. If you had chill bumps uh, or cold bumps, uh, the rectal pili muscle is pulling this portion of the dermis 
uh, and it makes a little indentation as it's trying to pull the hair follicle up. So this is the, the dermis, um, but you have the projection of the hair follicle down into, into the dermis uh, as we see there, and this is the subcutaneous layer or the uh, hypodermis that you can see. Here we see hair follicles projecting up through there. Sebaceous glands discharge in the hair follicle, and that's what makes your uh, hair kind of oily. And a pilisebaceous unit is a hair follicle, sebaceous unit, uh, and a muscle, the rectal pili muscle. Here you can see the rectal pili muscle, uh, sebaceous glands, uh, and right in here would be where the hair would be located in through there. Now, if you have straight hair, you have straight follicles. But if you have curly hair, you'll have curly follicles. And here you can see the curly follicles that's going to yield um, curly hair for this individual. Uh, so we see the sebaceous gland that's going to dump into the hair follicle, uh, and, uh, and that's what the oily stuff that makes your hair oily uh, over time. This is the rectal pili muscle. So the hair follicle, sebaceous uh, gland, as well as the rectal pili muscle, uh, make the pili sebaceous a unit. So there'd be one here, one there, one there, one there, one there, different units. And the uh, sebaceous gland has holocrine secretion, where uh, the cell itself is a secretion. That's why you don't see any lumen, because uh, these are the secretions in the lumen. Uh, in addition to sebaceous gland, you have an eccrine sweat gland. This is the one that makes a sweat, uh, which, which lands on your fingerprints, uh, or uh, also the cooling of the body. So this is the glandular portion, uh, and then this is a the, the duct portion of it. So you have a glandular portion and a duct. So this is a gland, and the duct is more eosinophilic, as we can see there. And uh, when it comes through thick skin, you can see where uh, uh, the opening of the, of the duct has to go all the way up to the top, because remember, uh, it's actually discharge on the surface of these. You can see uh, the sweat gland duct going up through there. Now at the uh, uh, rectal anal junction, uh, you may have hair follicles down through the sebaceous gland, eccrine sweat glands, uh, but here you can see that junction. This is be uh, simple columnar epithelial cells with goblet cells uh, that you see uh, in the large intestine, and then this is the anal uh, region here, stratified squamous epithelium. So you you go from simple columnar to stratified squamous epithelium. And at this location uh, is where you have this apricot sweat glands. The apricot sweat glands are bigger, bigger lumen than you see the apricot sweat glands. And these actually discharge uh, in the hair follicle itself. So there are different mechanisms for release of secretory products. You have American secretion, which is really just exocytosis. Uh, and then you have apricot secretion where you have some loss of the plasma membrane there. And both of these are in milk. So casein comes out through American secretion, uh, but the, the fat, uh, in order for uh, the fat to be solubilized, it has to have a little membrane around it. So apricot secretion, a little bit of membrane comes loose with the product. And that's in contrast to holocrine secretion which is sebaceous glands, have a whole secretion, the whole cell goes, uh, and uh, the cell itself is the secretion, where here, milk fat is a secretion, or casein, here the whole cell is a secretion. Uh, and the acrine sweat gland that is for cooling it is on the surface of skin, but the apricot sweat gland uh, discharges in the hair follicle itself, uh, and the sebaceous gland discharge in the hair follicle too. So you can see those. And uh, the sweat glands, the eccrine sweat gland discharge on that little ridge. And that's why you have the fingerprints. Because these little ridges here, uh, you, leave your, you leave your fingerprints on the ridges. Also, the sweat glands have myoepithelial cells. Uh, and the myoepithelium forms a, a mesh around uh, the secretory unit. And here you can see where it's kind of cut longitudinally. And you can see that uh, the pink cells are not continuous, uh, they're just uh, intermittent, 
uh, as they form an, a, a basket around them. Contraction of that squeezes the sweat out. Here you can see the myopathium, how they make a net around the secretory unit and squeeze that. We can see again uh, those cells. We want to thank the uh, original sources of the images and, uh, and uh, photographs that were taken that was used uh, in this presentation. So we want to thank them. They were the original sources of those, not me. So this is the end of the skin in terms of cells of the epidermis, the secretions, and the mucous cutaneous junctions.